Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. That's a quote by Apple founder Steve Jobs during the original iPhone introduction. Well, today, we're seeing a massive shift going on in the energy and transportation space involving a revolutionary new product, but it's not being made by Apple, but instead by Tesla. Tesla has been pushing aggressively into electric vehicles, led by CEO Elon Musk, and this global phenomenon has caused every automaker on the planet to start or to plan to start to make the shift to EVs. This is solely because of the success that Tesla has had in showing the world that electric cars are better economically and for the environment, but without any compromises. Now, it may be difficult to tell which of Tesla's products is leading this transformation. It could be the Model S, which has been blazing fast in each of its generational versions, or perhaps the Model 3, which is ultra-efficient and packs plenty of range at an affordable price point. But in fact, Tesla's transformative product is arguably neither of these and isn't even a vehicle at all. But instead, Elon Musk views the factory itself as the product. Even back during the 2016 shareholder meeting, at a time when Tesla was bringing up the Model 3 factory in Fremont, California, and their first gigafactory in Nevada, Elon Musk spoke of the machine that makes the machine and stated that the true problem, but where the greatest potential is, was building the factory. And he's been thinking of the factory as the product ever since. This makes a lot of sense because the factory is what enables scaling. Without it, the Model 3 would simply be a fancy prototype vehicle and with low volumes, the price would be unaffordable. Tesla wouldn't be able to achieve economies of scale, and at the same time, no one would have access to this vehicle because there would hardly be any on the market. Gigafactory enables all of this. The Gigafactory is also extremely difficult to copy. Competitors can purchase cars and reverse engineer them, but Tesla isn't shipping Gigafactories to be torn apart. And even if a process is known, or people can guess what Tesla is up to, the competition would need to make a bold bet on spending billions of dollars to try and outdo Tesla and arrange the level of talent that Tesla continues to assemble and harvest in order to even begin thinking of operating such a factory. Today, Tesla has two gigafactories that relate to vehicles. They have Giga Nevada, which makes batteries jointly with Panasonic, but the vehicles themselves are actually assembled in Fremont. And then Giga Shanghai in China, which is more streamlined and does car assembly, drive trains, and battery packs in the same location, even though outsourced battery cells are still used. But now, two years into the making, Tesla has just potentially doubled the size of the company with the official launch of its new Gigafactories in Berlin and Austin just two weeks apart. The opening of Giga Berlin is a massive success given all of the bureaucracy and troubles Tesla has had in Europe, whether it was saving snakes in the forest, cutting down trees originally planted for boxes, having water constraints, or dealing with protesters pretending to care for the environment as they protest the company doing the most to help the planet out of anyone else in the world. It took two and a half years, but Tesla was finally able to open the doors at Giga Berlin. At the same time, Tesla has been more secretive about Giga Texas until now. Giga Texas was started about eight months after Berlin began construction, but it's opening up just 16 days after the Berlin launch, demonstrating how quickly the Texas factory has been moving. That said, Tesla's China factory in Shanghai took just 10 months to build, outlining that the Gigafactory build speed perfectly matches the level of bureaucracy in each respective country. Now, Tesla is a company that combines multiple disciplinary areas together, from science and manufacturing to artificial intelligence and software. This means that a wide array of knowledge is needed to understand the company and the stock. And that's why today's sponsor is Blinkist, an app that will assist you in doing exactly that. Blinkist helps you discover and understand powerful ideas from books and podcasts in a short amount of time. They take an entire book and condense it into short segments called Blinks that highlight key ideas. So you can essentially read or listen to any book in about 15 minutes. Blinkist has over 5,000 titles in 27 different categories. These are non-fiction books which can help you expand your knowledge while growing both personally and professionally. For instance, using the Blinkist app, I read three books this weekend, something that would normally take me three years to complete. I read a book called Fabricated, containing blinks about 3D printing and the technology's far out possibilities. I'm always trying to gain insights into how Tesla may be using new technologies to enhance their products or for building prototypes. 
I also listened to a book called Life 3.0 by physicist Max Tegmark, who I've seen on YouTube a whole bunch, but this book was actually recommended by Elon Musk years ago on Twitter, and I hadn't gotten around to reading it. But one of the most interesting books I found was Zero to One, a more business-oriented book by Peter Thiel, who co-founded PayPal with Elon Musk. In one of the blinks, he talks about monopolies and how counterintuitively they're actually crucial for innovation. While he hits on a lot of great ideas and ways of looking at the business world, it's fascinating how closely this relates to Tesla, which seems to check off all of Peter Thiel's boxes as a disruptive and innovative firm. Now, one of my favorite features that I've been using before I go to bed is that I can let Blinkist play a series of books by adding them to my playlist. Because the content cuts through all of the fluff that would normally be in the full version and gives me the key points, I can save a ton of time. And if something about the book truly piques your curiosity, you can even purchase the full version from within the app. However, right now, Blinkist has a special offer just for my audience. Using the link below, start your free 7-day trial with Blinkist and get 25% off a premium membership. Click the link in the description to get the special offer from Blinkist right now. Now these new factories in Berlin and Austin are not like the others. Adding two new factories to Tesla's existing two factories seems like it would double the size of the company. However, the original Fremont facility in California is a patchwork built up over time. Tesla made many mistakes at this factory and learned from them. Even Giga Nevada is technically not complete, with Panasonic still making 18650 batteries for the Model S and X and 2170s for the 3 and Y. The factory's total capacity, including all four vehicles, is about 600,000. However, Tesla is nowhere near that number, at least a few hundred thousand vehicles lower in terms of its actual output. In Shanghai, however, things are different with a much newer and streamlined factory. Although Tesla states in its investor slide deck that Shanghai has a capacity of over 450,000 cars, the actual output appears to have surpassed 800,000 at a yearly run rate and continues to expand rapidly. However, the two new factories may be even more advanced, taking the learnings from Shanghai and applying them to Berlin and Texas. While the initial output capacities of these new factories are estimated to be around 500,000 units, starting with Model Y, these massive locations are changing the way cars are being built, which makes the factory floor more densely packed per unit output and they have plenty of room to expand. Tesla is also planning to bring up the Cybertruck at Giga Texas, which will add more higher value units. But what's important here is that each of these new factories will be producing their own 4680 battery cells, which are specifically designed with scaling in mind. Thanks to Fly Brandenburg for providing the footage, we can see that the massive Giga Berlin factory is in the midst of constructing a new battery facility on site. Batteries have been the limiting factor to vehicle production, and so Tesla is taking this into their own hands, which has made each of the factories significantly more efficient at boosting battery production in the same amount of physical space. Tesla even alludes to its new factories as being Terra factories with 10 times the gigawatt hour output density and 75% cheaper per gigawatt hour as compared to their 2018 factory. Therefore, adding two new factories may be equivalent to adding 10 or 20 Giga Nevadas, especially since Tesla's first Giga factory was never fully completed. When Tesla first spoke about the concept of Giga factories, they said they needed 200 of them to blanket the planet in order to convert the world to sustainable energy. But this estimate didn't seem to take into account the exponential improvement in technology and therefore efficiency. In 2016, Elon Musk updated this number to just 100 gigafactories. This is also for the entire world, whereas Tesla alone is shooting for 20 million cars per year. This is about 20% of the auto industry, which would therefore mean that Tesla would need just 20 factories. However, just looking at vehicle numbers, if each factory makes 1 million cars per year, then 20 factories is spot on. Now, while it hasn't happened yet, it's likely that Tesla is preparing to make more than a million cars per year in a single factory. Looking at Giga Shanghai, for example, which already produces a run rate of about 840,000 Model Ys and Model 3s yearly, this run rate could hit a million by the end of the year. Yet Tesla has touted its design studio in China and smaller $25,000 compact car. With a global parts shortage, however, now is not the time to focus on this vehicle, as Elon Musk put new products on hold for this year. But eventually, this plan for an ultra-high volume car could surpass Model 3 and Model Y, and that would be incremental to Giga Shanghai's production. The same is true for a potential hatchback coming out of Giga Berlin, 
or a robotaxi type vehicle which could be produced at Giga Texas in addition to Model Y, Cybertruck, Roadster, and Semi. If Model Y in Austin is aiming to approach 500,000 units and Cybertruck is close to 250,000, a number that Elon Musk said he was targeting, then Tesla's other products leave plenty of room to grow past the 1 million vehicle mark. If the new factories can reach 2 million cars per year as their maximum capacity, then only 10 factories are needed by 2030. The output per factory directly affects the number of gigafactories needed, and so it actually doesn't make sense to duplicate an inefficient factory, which is what we're seeing competitors do, but instead optimize each factory for extreme scale by building next-gen facilities, which is what Tesla is doing, and then perhaps just a handful of gigafactories will be needed. Imagine that each new factory may eventually be able to scale to 4 million cars per year across all different products, which isn't completely unrealistic given the future roadmap for a more affordable vehicle. Then, only 5 state-of-the-art gigafactories would be needed, and Tesla already has 3 of them. And that said, on the most recent conference call, Elon Musk mentioned that the company is planning to expand the output of Fremont and Nevada by 50%. This could boost the current 600,000 capacity to about a million units. Elon also alluded to building new factories at new locations in the future. He says that he expects to announce new locations towards the end of this year. It's important to also keep in mind that by that time, Tesla will have new learnings under its belt from Texas and Germany, and so any new factories will house the next generation of technology. And by the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Now, some competitors have said that they too will be building gigafactories, which of course are needed since the auto market is closer to 100 million units per year and Tesla can't do it alone. However, when a competitor says the word gigafactory, they aren't talking about the same thing that Tesla is doing. They're just trying to tap into buzzwords, but any quote-unquote gigafactory attempt by competitors would essentially be their first try, while Tesla has now completed essentially its fourth generation factory and third generation battery technology. That said, even Fremont, which will arguably become Tesla's slowest factory, is the most productive car factory in all of North America. So competitors, which have hundreds of factories spread out all over the world, producing ICE vehicle components and internal combustion engines themselves, have quite an uphill battle in order to convert or close down these factories over time. Even Volkswagen has decided to go forward with building a new $2 billion factory that will have a capacity of just 250,000 cars, and will start construction in 2023, and if all goes well, produce vehicles off the line in 2026. They're aspiring to target Tesla's current 10 hours per car production rate, as opposed to at least 30 hours per car where Volkswagen resides today. But as fast as they move, compared to Tesla's timelines and sense of urgency, VW, the largest car company on the planet, next to Toyota, is moving at the speed of a snail stuck in molasses. Tesla's new Gigafactories are next level. While there were likely a few hundred cars delivered by Giga Berlin in the first quarter, the new factories are said to be able to ramp up much faster than previous factories. Texas is also opening up right at the start of the second quarter, so it will be interesting to see the ramp up speed compared to previous factories. And funny enough, Volvo was said to have registered a Model Y back in 2020 to reverse engineer it, and Elon Musk replied to a tweet saying that the Berlin Model Y is the one to watch. While Volvo has been trying to copy and implement old technology for the last few years, this has all become obsolete with the new design. Model Y will have front and rear castings and a new paint shop. Berlin will be starting with the 2170 cells, but will transition to structural battery pack and 4680s once Berlin ramps up its own 4680 cell production. Texas will be starting with 4680s provided by Fremont. Now Elon stated that there is a big technology ramp, however it will take about two years to prove it out and to have the new tech make its way to Tesla's other factories and into other vehicles. But these new factories may be the beginning of the end for other automakers, many of whom are still trying to catch up to Tesla's 2012 Model S. What's most interesting is that Elon Musk was once criticized and admitted to overly automating the original Model 3 factory. This made it seem like automating is a bad thing and he wouldn't do it again, but that couldn't be further from the truth. What he really meant by over-automating is taking on too much, especially during a critical time such as Model 3, for which the entire company was depending on for its survival. 
Tesla was also spending time automating things that shouldn't exist. There was something called Flufferbot, for example, where they tried to get a robot to put fluff into the car to reduce noise, but the robot had trouble picking up the fluff. In the end, it turned out that the fluff didn't have any benefit at all. This is sort of a problem that competitor Rivian is falling into, where they're building their second factory before validating their first, which has only produced about a thousand vehicles so far. I talked about this in detail here. But really, once the factory is going with humans, then segments can be replaced with automation or the automation can be improved and optimized. However, Tesla now has had experience with multiple factories, and so they posted this incredible video of a fly-through of their new Giga Berlin factory. And the question is, where are the people? Now Sandy Monroe says that this video was taken during pre-production. However, Tesla has removed a significant number of steps with its new Giga casting design and the bulk of the new factory appears to be highly automated with new processes. The people in the video just seem like they're there as props and the factory runs itself. While this isn't totally the case, the insane automation of the new factories will demonstrate Tesla's advanced ability to scale to new volumes from a single factory. So what do you think will be the capacity of Giga Texas and Giga Berlin after just a few years? And how many Giga factories do you think Tesla needs to hit its 20 million vehicle goal by 2030? Don't forget to check out our Blinkist sponsor link in the description below and try out the app for yourself. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.